We're gonna go back to 1993 in Fort Worth, Texas. And there's a man named Steve Roberts. And he's recently divorced. Um, he's 38 and he's a postman. Steve Robards loved his job. One thing that I really like about this is this man was going through a divorce and it's hard, bro. It, it, divorces are no joke, especially when you're in your late 30s, especially in somewhere like traditional like Texas. You're conditioned to think that you're supposed to settle down in your early 20s. And so for women, it's terrifying when they get a divorce late in life, feeling like nobody will date you and you'll never find anyone. It's just as scary for men. And don't be talking about that shit. So my homeboy out here, he gonna figure it out. There's no plenty of fish back in 93. He's doing his best. And I love the fact that he was a postman because you know, every day he's walking the same kind of route. He's outside. He said before that he loved his job and he loved being outside. He's got this routine. We're in Texas, Texas in the 90s. So he's walking around, hey Steve, you know, the neighborhoods, hey Steve. My man needed this because he was in a one bedroom apartment all by himself, recently divorced at 38, just trying to figure it out. We all know a Steve. We all do. Steve is kind of just living his life, trying to get through his divorce. And then one day, his 16-year-old daughter, Marie, moves in after Marie has this blowout argument with her mom and her stepdad. She had been raised by her mom and her stepdad since she was like about four years old or so. He came into the picture. And there's this blowout argument, and now Marie is living with Steve. And Steve is happy. He's got his kid in the house. He's got, like, honestly, and I feel like for him going through the divorce, to have Marie at the house was, like, so secure. Like, I'm not alone. I have my child with me. I have my daughter. Like, he probably felt more safe when she moved in. I, I, I would like to assume, like, he was a, you know, good dad by the, like, he had a girlfriend at the time, but he only had a one-bedroom apartment. So as soon as Marie moved in, he goes and applies to get the bigger apartment, like to get the next upgrade as soon as possible. He is trying to take care of things. So Marie lives there, she lives there for a little bit and they're in church one day and Steve kind of starts to feel sick. I try to talk about like men and men's feelings and the things that men go through so we can all be aware, right? It's very hard for men to admit when they're having health issues, it's hard because it feels like it's not masculine. Men are conditioned to hold in all of their feelings. That's why sometimes we have issues with accountability and whatnot, because they're conditioned from an early age not to talk about feelings, not to admit to pain, not to want to go to the hospital. Y'all ever met an 80 year old man that doesn't want to go to the hospital because his pride is too high? So Steve starts to feel sick and they go home and it doesn't get better. It starts to get worse. And it's just stomach cramps, really. Like he was nauseous, he was hot, but it progressively started to get a little bit worse. And by the end of the night, Steve was so sick. He couldn't, he couldn't stand, he couldn't, he hadn't eaten. There was no, he couldn't handle it anymore. And that's why I was really trying to drive home. It is hard for men sometimes to be like, I need to go to the hospital. Because basically to them sometimes it's, I can't handle this anymore. And that's the point that Steve got to. And so Marie, you know, probably because he's resisting for a while, she runs out and she grabs a neighbor and it's like, my dad is sick, I don't know what to do. Bitch, is your neighbor a medic? I don't think so, pick, pick up, up the, the phone. phone. So she does, she calls the phone, eventually calls 911. And I, and I say that because I'm like, what? You should have called 911, but maybe maybe she didn't know what to do. Maybe Steve was saying like, no, I don't wanna go to the hut, I don't wanna pay for it, all that, whatever. Eventually they call the, they call the ambulance and it gets there, but after, hours grueling in pain that slowly ramped up he died before they could even get him to the hospital when the paramedics get there he's foaming from the mouth he's completely out and they take him in they do an autopsy on him and they say that it was cardiac arrest now remember he was 38 years old but the coroner went in and they could see that steve's heart was about 25 percent larger than the average man his size and so they figured 25%, that's a lot. Coroner writes it on the report. <sighs> Cardiac arrest, early age. So after this, Marie has to go live with her grandparents. She's not going back with her mom. She transfers to the school. She's like a really great student. The boys really liked her too. Let me show you Marie. Because Marie's mom was really glamorous. So in turn, like we're in the 90s, 
Marisa, I got this. She's got luscious hair. You know, she's got light makeup. She's pretty. She's very pretty. The boys liked her. She had boyfriends. She was good in school. All this stuff, right? So that's her. So she goes off to live with her grandparents. She's in high school and things are going pretty well. She even like after she graduated, she used the life insurance money from her father's death to pay for college because she knew that that's what her dad would have wanted. <sighs> Something really interesting happened at this point in time. Now, what I'm gonna read to you guys comes directly from an article, okay? So the, the article here, the journalist interviewed the person that's gonna give these verbatim quotes. Instead of just, you know, telling this whole part again, cause it's like, Bose, how do you know this? I'm gonna read you what's in the article. It's 1994 and Marie is in her senior year of high school. She's hanging out with one of her friends, Stacy. Stacy was one of the most popular girls in school, and this was Marie's best friend. That just tells you how high her status was. Marie, she was the shit, okay? She was gonna go to college, become a pathologist, all these boys thought she was really high, all this stuff like that. Marie was the shit. It says, one night in January 1994, during her senior year of high school in the Fort Worth suburb, Marie was studying Shakespeare's Hamlet with Stacy, one of the school's most popular girls. According to Stacy's versions of events, which Marie has never denied, Stacy turned to her favorite part of the play, the soliloquy of Danish monarchs Claudius, who poisoned his brother, Hamlet's father, to gain the throne. In her most dramatic voice, which was only slightly affected by her Texas drawl, Stacy, the friend, recited Claudius's agonizing speech, in which he wonders if he can ever repent. Quote, my fault is my past, but oh, what form of prayer can serve my turn? Forgive me my foul murder. That cannot be since I am still possessed of the effects for which I did the murder. Isn't that cool? Stacy said. But when she looked across the table, Maria turned pale and her hands were trembling. Stacy, Maria asked, do you think people can go through life without a conscience? Stacy answered, well, how about the kind of person who can look someone in the eye and kill him in cold blood? While staring at Stacy, Marie got out of her chair, backed up to the wall, and then collapsed onto the floor and began to weep. Marie, what is the problem? Stacy asked. Guess. Stacy thought of the worst predicament that she could imagine a fellow 17-year-old girl could be in. She said, Oh my God, are you pregnant? No, Marie said. You wrecked your grandpa's car? Marie shook her head, no. Almost jokingly, Stacy asked, oh, Well, you didn't kill somebody, did you? Marie's body heaved with sobs. My father, she said. Now, I wanted to read that to you guys so you could see the whole interaction of like what led up to this point. Marie wanted to be a pathologist, if you remember that. Marie proceeds. I'm not sure if she told Stacy this, but this is what happened. She was in school, she was in the science lab, and she was trusted in the science lab. As a senior in high school, she had access to everything pretty much in that science lab. But it wasn't her going somewhere and stealing what she needed. She had basically done a course that day on this type of poison. They, it was used for other things, but she was warned not to ingest it. It was very deadly. It was very poisonous. And so what did Marie do? She scraped some into a little plastic bag, rolled it up and put it in her backpack because Marie planned to kill her father that night. Why? We'll get there. We'll get there. Guys, what do you do? Chat, what is your response to this? What do you do after your best friend that you're just like chilling with tells you that she killed somebody? Like, it, it's so shattering because imagine you've known somebody for a year, you feel like you know them through thing and thin. You're fucking 18 years old, you're a fucking kid. What else you got hiding up in there? And then suddenly they say that they killed someone. <sighs> Who are you? What else have you done? What are you gonna do to me? It's like, it's like shattering, you know? Marie. She takes that poison that same night that she stole it with no hesitation. And that night, she and her dad ordered Mexican food 
And she even said that it was, it, it was heavy flavoring. So she mixed the poison into her dad's Mexican food that night. And they ate dinner. They went to sleep that night. And by the next day, he had those stomach cramps in church, which progressively over the course of 24 hours killed Steve Roberts. But why? 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 I'm going to tell you guys right now, this ain't no Bridget Harris shit. This is her, this is her mother. I, look, we saw those pictures of her before. Marie was very glamorous. So was her mother. Her mother was also, for her early, like earlier in her life, her mom was like her best friend, but also she really looked up to her. Like her mom was beautiful, gorgeous, smart, all of this. And that's what Marie wanted to be, okay? So eventually, like I said, when she's four, Marie's mom starts dating this dude. And now that's her stepdad. They kind of have, a you know, ups and downs, whatever. But one day, Marie Robarts comes home and her stepfather is in bed with another woman. Marie immediately tells her mom. So th this part is kind of interesting because Marie was very adamant. Like, mom, you need to leave him. You need to divorce him. You need to break up with him. Like, this is horrible. Like, how could he do this? How could he? And guess what? Marie's mom said, no, that is my husband and I'm staying with him. And Marie couldn't believe it. Now, when I read a little bit about their history and heard some other stuff too, I feel like Marie was very attached to her mother and she wanted her stepdad gone so she could also have her mother all to herself. She was cool, beautiful, inspiring, such a good friend, all this stuff. Marie loved her mom. So you remember when I told you that there was a big argument that caused Marie to go move in with her dad, Steve? That was the argument. So after that, she goes off and moves in with Steve. After Marie killed her father, she wanted to go back and live with her mother. And her mother had left she left her she said you're not moving in with me she left with her stepdad her her new husband and so then marie is forced to live with her grandparents and this is huge because after marie was caught because she had told her friend of course her friend couldn't handle it anymore she went and told the cops as she fucking should and on top of that the police were already looking into steve robart's death because they're like how a 38 year old man die of cardiac arrest let's keep looking into this suddenly stacy's like um i know how let's look into this marie gets arrested and she immediately corroborates a lot of the things that stacy said and then the cops ask her one thing and they say why did you kill your father? And Marie said, because I wanted to live with my mom. What? Yes, like, yes. She thought, she thought that if she killed her dad, she would be, fo she would be able to go back and live with her mom. But that was not the case. Her mother left and then she had to go live with her grandparents and Marie had to sit there every day and deal with the fact that she killed her dad and she didn't even she didn't even get what she wanted. Now she's with her grandparents. Now she's in this whole new city state whatever. She killed her father because she wanted to go live with her mom and she was willing to do it at all costs. So this is kind of like an ending part of like what happened like in her trial. Afterwards, she confesses to everything. Her friend corroborates a lot of it. And then afterwards, they go to actually test the body. And what ended up happening was this particular chemical back in the 90s required a machine that would cost $150,000 for them to test. So the coroner that day had just written cardiac arrest and moved on. He was never tested for this. When they went back and they actually tested his body for it after they exhumed it, they found 1.5% more than anyone could ever handle of this still in his skin and system. Marie pleads guilty to everything. So Marie's team tried to argue that she never intended to kill her father, that she just wanted to get him sick enough 
so that she could go live with her mom because he couldn't take care of her anymore. Which is really like fucked up in theory because it's like, oh, let me get my dad really, really sick and then like leave somebody else to take care of him. Bye, I'm gonna go live with my mom now. That was not what she was trying to do. She was gonna kill her dad so she could go live with her mom. No ifs, ands, or buts. So I'll read you another excerpt from the end of this article. The prosecution's most important witness, of course, was Stacy High. Wearing a green dress, brown loafers, and white socks, she came to the stand, nervously sucking on a breath mint, and said that Marie had told her during one of their conversations that she knew the poison would be fatal. At one point, Stacy turned and looked at Marie. They locked eyes, and then Marie dropped her head. In the end, the jury was apparently swayed by Mitch Poe when he said in his final argument, that's the prosecutor that's trying to put Marie away, he said, just one stomach ache wasn't going to get Marie back to her mama's place. Steve Roberts had to die. The jurors convicted Marie of murder, which left them with questions of deciding her sentence. The defense attorneys felt they had no choice but to have Marie testify. She nearly stumbled as she walked to the stand. In a squeaky, trembling voice, she told the jury that she had never been convicted of a crime. We don't give a fuck! You kill somebody! You can't just be like, go straight to a 10 and be like, but I never did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's just one 10. You can't do that. She said that her only contact with the Roberts family since her arrest was a birthday card she had sent her grandfather. Then Casey asked, Marie, did you love your dad? Very much, she said. Are you sorry you killed your dad? It was time for her to repent. Bursting into tears, she turned to the side of the courtroom where Rob the Robards were sitting and said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Wait, somebody said, any askers? Dude, yeah, murder ain't a strike. Look, we saw that happen before with the, what's her name? Emma Pressler? Yeah, they gave Emma Pressler a strike, and then what? I, I don't want to see all this crying and carrying on. This, dude, this case is so wild to me because I'm like, you were this smart and you did this? It's so illogical. It's so fucking illogical.